all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Racha, Hakwadash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, love, acquire to the elect. I want to touch on a different kind of video, but I kind of want to touch on this. Um, I've been watching, the, uh, I think, Apostle Ramlob. He went into something of that nature, and then Apostle Tahar did. So I uh, can't get away. You know, it was in my spirit to touch on this topic because I get it with a lot of Christians. We had a few Christians come up. This is this is their favorite scripture. I'll read it. Uh, now, we've read this scripture. Well, then again, when I was in church, they never read me this scripture. Eve. I didn't know who the hell the Jew or Greek was. Anyway, uh, I knew what a Greek was, but I didn't know what a Jew was. Anyway, it says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ, Jesus. You know? <laughs> and that's the... Um, let me go on. It says, and if ye be Christ, if ye be in Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. See, they don't keep reading. Who who had the, who, of Abraham's seed who had heirs according to the promise? We know he had Ishmael. We know he had Isaac. And out of Isaac came Jacob and Esau. So out of Ishmael and Esau, okay, they didn't get the promise. Okay. Ishmael got what he got. So there was uh, Jacob. Okay. So this is what this is saying when it's saying Jew nor Greek. Now I'll get into that because uh, you had this thing with the, um, if you, you know, if you do any research, you know, you'll have something, uh, this thing called with St. Jerome called the Vulgate. Uh, I've studied that a while back. And in the Vulgate, they did many things different interpretations according to the scriptures okay they uh, I think the word cross uh, was supposed to be put there it, it was really tree now when you go to the book of Acts the fifth chapter it says uh, Yahweh Shai slew and hanged on a tree that was probably one of the original texts okay and even in the mark of the beast I think he put in character okay even though he was off on translations he put in character to signify that it was something physical. So it said, uh, receive a character in your hand, your right hand or your forehead, to let you know <clears throat> that it was physical. Now they had this thing called universal universalism, universal religion, okay? Now the one way, when you watch the book of Eli, the Edomites, they wanted that Bible so they can make a universal religion for power. And through religion, we know that um, you can control and seize the people mind through fear okay so when you go to Galatian 3 and 28 there's neither Jew nor Greek neither uh, bond nor free for we are all one in Christ you are all one in Christ okay understanding that a lot of Christians believe just because you are you believe to be a follower of Christ and then we hate saying that name but I'm saying it so people understand um, the scripture says the righteous shall scarcely make it. And he's only dealing with any elect of the Israelites. But let's go in there, uh, uh, warp way of thinking. You will still have to be an elect. But they just hold hands and say it doesn't matter. None of them have fear that they're of the non-elect, if you notice that. They all hold hands and they all believe they're all Christians in one and they don't worry. They think Christ is just going to come deliver them. Okay? Got news for you. Christ ain't coming any damn way. Okay? There's another Savior coming. And his name ain't Christ. Okay? So let's go to Galatians uh, 6 and 16. It says, And as many, it says, And as many as walk according to his rule, peace be on them and mercy. And upon the Israel of God, okay, which was supposed to be the God of Israel. But you get the point, okay? From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Yahweh, okay? Brethren, now somebody will trip you up with the mark of the beast. Well, what is that mark? 
Okay, that that is metaphorical, but he's still talking about the physical mark marks that Yahusha took. Okay, goes on to say, brethren, the grace of our Lord Yahusha be with your spirit. So uh, amen, uh, you know, so let it be. But it says, brethren, oh, wait a minute, why didn't it say everybody? So when you go up to the, the Galatians, the third chapter, it says, whether Jew or Greek, you are all one in Christ. Okay, okay, so I uh, got a couple of articles. I am just took a little clips out of here. Okay, it says, the tragic misinterpretation and misapplication to use this verse as a justification for the hypothesis that since the majority of Jews rejected the Messiah and his gospel, God has instituted a new program in which the New Testament church, the body of Christ, has replaced Israel. And this is why these Christians, this is what they teach. They teach since we went against the Most High, um, the Jehovah Witness, wickedness teach that as well, that the Lord just created a new covenant with everybody. We'll get into that later too, Lord's willing, <clears throat> later in the lesson. Okay, because the Lord didn't make a new covenant with everybody. That's plain, and we'll we'll show you that. So let's go to uh, Romans, um, the eleventh chapter. It says, "I say, then have Yahweh cast away his people? Yahweh forbid." This is Paul saying this, okay? But I thought in Galatia he said, "Well, don't matter if you're Jew or Greek; doesn't matter. You're all one in Christ." It says God forbid, for I also am an Israelite and of the seed of Abraham. And the tri and of the tribe of Benjamin. Now, if everybody it doesn't matter if you were Jew or Greek or Gentile, why would he say this, man? Are you saying he's saying this because you're feeling like that he cast off his people and and the Christians, the the these uh, Edo Christians deserve the the rulership, the throne. This is because Paul was speaking to only Israelites. This is why you had the Book of Hebrews. Okay, let's go to another article real quick. That's why I'm trying to make this quick. It's a lot. All you got to do is research, man. You know, um, there is no need for any part of the Bible to be translated until the community of Jews in the diaspora forget their Hebrew. Okay, the diaspora. Okay, when you know we lost, you know, you know, Jake lost his heritage. Dispore means it's like the separation, dispersed. For the Jews of Alexandria, okay, the Hellenized Jews, in the 3rd century B.C., Greek is the first language. So you had Israelites, or their language was Greek. So let's go back to Galatians, the third chapter. It says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. What do you think he's talking about? He's talking about the Israelites that made Greek their tongue, the Hellenized Jew. Neither bond nor free, okay? There is uh, neither male or female, okay? So really, some of that really didn't have to be placed there, but the Spirit of the Lord had it there. Basically, the whole thing would have been, don't matter who you are, you're an Israelite. Basically, you're an Israelite. And it don't matter if you claim to be Greek if you, you're a woman, you know, whatever, basically you're all Israelites. This is Paul saying, don't matter what you follow. Now, if Paul beamed up here, <clears throat> which he's here somewhere today, <clears throat> okay, and um, if he's here today, and the first thing he'll say, you know, the first thing he'll say is, you're Israelites. Now, it's, it's kind of something because... You have the apostles of Great Millstone, starting with Apostle Tahar, is the ones that, that's doing the Jew and Greek thing again, saying Jew, Jew or Gentile. For the ones who know the Israelites, who's following other doctrines, to come back to the right doctrine, and to the ones with the confusion of faces who may look like Edomites or Chinese, you know, this is what the apostles are saying. You are all one in uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh this is like the same thing being said over again, just fast forward it. You know, that's crazy enough. That tells you there's no new thing under the sun. 
And there's there's definitely reincarnation. That's all I'm gonna go on that. Okay, and um so when you go to Romans the ninth chapter, okay. Um let's go to Romans the ninth chapter because this also goes into it as well. Okay, this is Romans nine. And this is a, a scripture we always read, but hey, we gotta read it over and over again, you know. This is Paul concerning, it says right here, Paul concerned for the Jews, which in their text, it should have said probably Jew and Gentile, and that way when you read this text, you would have known who it was talking to, foreign, foreign uh, Israelites, okay, who believed they were Greek, okay, it says, I say the truth, and Yahweh shall I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great and heaviness continue to sorrow in my heart. Okay, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Yahweh for my brethren. And that's what we just read in Galatians, uh, the sixth chapter. Okay, in the 16th verse where it says, Brethren, the grace of our Lord Yahweh be with your spirit. Okay, so let's go back here. It's all about the precepts. For I could wish that myself were a curse from my uh from Yahweh from my brethren and my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, okay, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the services of Yahweh and the promises. Okay? That's plain. So when Paul was speaking to all men, okay, the all men was ones who didn't know, because you had some that didn't know they was Israelites, okay, or, or uh, fell away from glory, so to speak, and they had to come back. So, and, they, and they, you had others that knew that they was Israelites and said, hey, you're an Israelite, don't matter, you're one of us. You got to understand when an NBA championship, the ones that sit on the bench still get the prize, still get a reward. Okay, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you would, if you would, you're at the least. Okay, that's why I'm saying, and when you read, uh, I believe in Galatians, it says, whether bond nor free, you're all one and you have a shot. Okay, because our people are so messed up today that they don't, they won't even believe just because they're on the lowest of the, of the totem pole, so to speak. Uh, and I hate to use that word. But because they're the lowest, they believe that they're nothing. So we're telling you to, to this day that it don't matter. You could be a, a wealthy type of man, not super rich, but, you know, and it may be so. I don't know. You know, that way you're willing to do what you need to do for the, the sake of the brotherhood. Okay. So, you know, you have people who say it doesn't matter, you know. You know, people say it doesn't matter. So you had, again, you had this, um, this uh, Vulgate, you know, uh, St. Jerome, who uh, basically universalized religion. And a part of that, at, in, in really doing a lot of those times, they did the iconoclism. That's where you get the virgin birth, the virgin Mary. I mean, the picture of her with the little white Jesus. You know, a little Edomite baby and all those pictures, the, the picture of the fake Jesus, you know, the, the, during the time of the, the um, iconoclism and the Bible crusade, so to speak, Bible destruction group. They did a lot, man. And through that, you know, even in slavery, it was used to further enslave you. That Bible was powerful and they knew it. Okay, so at the end of the day, who was the law given to? It was given to the Hebrews. Okay, let's go to uh, this other clip. It says right here, the epistle to the Hebrews. That's what it was called. The epistle to the Hebrews or letter to the Hebrews. Uh, or in the Greek manuscripts, simply to the Hebrews. Okay. This is why we go back to the book of Hebrews. 
Hebrews 8 and 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. So now if these Christians are claiming, oh, that had already happened. Well, let's go on and see if that already happened. For this is the covenant that I will make, that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, a power, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, no, look, know the Lord, because we're already going to know. So if this had already happened, you wouldn't need these churches. You wouldn't need anybody us to even tell you. You would already know. Secondly, if this had already happened, we wouldn't be in this society right now, okay? Because if we could follow the laws perfectly, we wouldn't be here, okay? We would not be here. And when he said, I will put my laws into their mind, you Christians believe the Lord's laws is in your mind, okay? In, on, in this hell, you, you can't be serious. And in fact, through the fulfilling of this, this law, when the Lord cleans this all up, we will be at peace. If you Christians, and I heard some Christians say they're in the kingdom already. Uh, this is not the kingdom I would want to be in. You know, I've joked with a brother. I said, hey, this is the kingdom. Send my ass to hell. <laughs> That's all I have on that. Shalom.